We got the World Series preview and then some other fun tidbits. Is Aaron Rodgers a good leader? And Russ Wilson finds yet another thing it's super annoying to do on an airplane. That and more. This is the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome back to the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. This is Chad the Mark with Mr. Brown and Canadian Biggie. And we are back once again and it's Thursday night and we're sitting here watching football and, and you know we've gotten lucky the past few weeks because the NFL Thursday night shows have been absolutely putrid. But college football has saved us, Major League Baseball has saved us, but tonight there is no saving us, but at least they had a decent matchup with the Bucks and the Ravens, two teams that are desperate, desperately trying to right the ship. This is a game when the season started you thought you really wanted to watch. Now it's just a, another yeah. one that's reason the Amazon viewership <laughs> yeah. keeps going down. Amazon's like, we get this game? All right, we'll take it. No, no, no. It's, uh, even the London games have been better than this, and uh, that's not saying much, but uh you know, we uh, had all, all of us were on the Ravens tonight to cover the, the road spread of two, except for Canadian Biggie, who his Tom Brady love just shines through. And so far, you're looking right. I feel good right now. It feels good. I will say this. This is one of those games where either team picked feels wrong. I don't know how anybody could pick them after they lost to the CMC list oh. Panthers twenty one to three last it's week. It's like I'm just writing them off now. Yeah. Like I'm done. I, and you know, you always want to predict Tom Brady's uh demise, and I haven't been able to do that. And I thought maybe I'd get it right. So we kind of touched on it earlier. Which is the bigger surprise of how bad Brady and Rodgers are doing or the rise and the dominance of New York football between the Jets and the Giants? So, uh, you know, I was ready to talk World Series, let's, but let's, let's just, just go ahead. Let's just it. jump into what's in our hearts right now. So we, we have the surprising stories out there. The New York teams have been phenomenal. Uh, the, the Packers and Bucks have been just absolutely uh, dog shit, to say the least. So for me, like the Jets, uh, not quite there. Like when you watch the Jets and the Giants, okay, the Giants, I feel like they have some trust with Danny Dimes there. They're asking him to make some plays. And with the Jets, they're just asking uh, uh, Zach Wilson not to screw up, right? Yeah, but even like if you're not you're not a believer in the Jets, but the Jets, what they've done so far – we know Hall went down out for the year. Yeah, but, but they made a move. They got James Robinson, who's a nice, solid pickup, considering how quickly quickly they acted on it. But my point is, is that even if you're not a believer, this, they're a bigger surprise than what they're doing compared to how bad Brady and Rodgers are doing. Yeah, yeah, they are. It is much more of a surprise. The uh, – the the thing for the Jets to go out and make that trade though does that mean they really believe like they can compete for a playoff spot? Well, they'd be in the playoffs if uh, season were to end today. <laughs> I don't wait, wait. They're a playoff team right now. Yeah, I'll be damned. I, I think that shows to their fans. You know what? We've played solid and uh, we're not writing off the season. You know, we're gonna see if Jets we're ahead won. of the curve here. They won what four straight? Right? They're sitting at five and two. The last loss was against the Bengals. Yeah. Five and two, they'd be wild card right now. Uh, Robert Sala said he was keeping score uh, of everyone that was talking shit about them. Yeah, do that quietly. They had a reason to talk shit. <laughs> he, was, he was going back to week one. He's like, it's in the same Jets. And I guess he's right. They're not, but they're they're at least competitive. Like they're, I, I, I'm curious to see how they do without Hall though, because he was such an integral part of what they were doing. I agree it's a bigger surprise that the New York teams are above 500 or they are where they are. As shocking as it is to have the Packers and the Bucks doing as poorly as they are. I kept seeing these things when the Giants were 1-0, 2-0, 3-0. First time they'd been that far over 500 since like Obama's first term and their second <laughs> Super Bowl where they beat the Patriots. And it's just amazing that they're 11-3 and between the two of them. And, and I know that he's not a Hall of Famer like Rodgers and Brady, but do we go ahead and throw Lamar in there as well? On the, on the quarterbacks of underperformers? I, I, I'm not going to throw him in the same category just for the simple fact that their record could be a lot different if just, you know, a couple plays go the other way. They've been in almost every game. Uh, he's He's got no help. Uh, I mean, they got J.K. Dobbins back. He's already on IR again. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not a believer in Lamar. I, I'm – I think uh, – so the contract, right? They didn't, this is his contract year. Yeah, and that's, that's, it's not looking good. No, it isn't. Like last time the Ravens had a quarterback who bet on himself, Joe Flacco, won the Super Bowl, got paid big. 
for Lamar, you would have thought that it would have been better to sign him before the year. He's going to come out, have an MVP type season, which he's already won one. And uh, it's went the complete opposite way. Well, then you got him and then you got your little favorite uh, tiny person out in Arizona. I mean, <laughs> similar Calamari. skill set. I mean, film seems like he's already regressing and he has weapons. I, is it, are we just back to the debate on can you win long term with a quarterback that is predominantly mobile versus the pocket passer? Well, you look at what the Bucks are doing tonight. They've held them at three points basically because they don't rush anyone when they pass. We'll sit back and make you be a passer. Yeah, I mean, if, if Lamar Jackson rushes for over 70 yards, I feel like they win every game that that happens in. But usually the reason why he's running for those yardages is because the opening was there. Like, they've not played to stop that, and he's just burning with that. Well, in this game, too, I don't know if he's come back, but I saw Mark Andrews go to the uh, locker room in the second quarter. Oh, yeah, because that's all he needs is just to lose another uh, key weapon there. They don't need anything. Well, the thing, too, with him and uh, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray's regressed, but he's got Hopkins and Connor running back. Could you imagine if Lamar had the same weapons? Yeah. Just even the backfield. Oh, Hollywood Brown before he went down. Well, let's stay, well, on, the, him. Let's stay <laughs> on the quarterback train here. What the hell is going on in New England where you lose to the Bears like that? That was not expected at all. That killed our that wait, killed our picks wait, wait, last week. Are you are you Camp Mac or Camp Zappy? I love Zappy Hour probably as much as anybody, but Mac Jones is much more talented quarterback who as a rookie last year, won 10 games, Pro Bowl alternate, set a few different rookie records. He didn't lose his job because he was playing poorly. He got injured. Give him a chance to get some game rhythm. What's up with Belichick trying to answer what's going on in that quarterback room? They're asking him in the press conference. And Dude, he, he turns every question, even though it's not hypothetical, into, well, that's hypothetical, so I'm not going to answer that. Well, but you saw initially how New England couldn't do anything offensively with Jones, and then they bring in Zappi, and he's like a cult hero to the New England faithful, yeah. and how quickly that changed. Oh, they turned on a dime, don't they? It was, But it was like Matt got three series, took his ass out, and Zappi well, couldn't do anything. On his third series, I watched the replay. That the ball that was intercepted uh-huh. hit off the ESPN wire. It looks <laughs> like it does. ESPN said it didn't. But when Zappy comes in the game, rookie, they don't expect quite as much out of him. They call the plays a little bit different. He's always under center. They're running a little so more. So I heard Colin there. Cowherd say this week, and I don't always agree with Colin, but I think he's right here, that Zappy has a better command of the offense, but Max got better talent. Max got better talent, but – when Mac is in the game, they go like 75% out of the shotgun. And they expect him to make all the reads and know because he's more advanced. With Zappy, they really kind of dumb it down, and he plays really well within it. All right, so let, let's keep on the uh, quarterback train unless you got something else. No, I, I'm going – I don't know if it's the same one. But go can, ahead. can we go to Green Bay? Didn't we already kind of touch on him? I got a specific question to all ask right, about go ahead, him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, you know, we were talking earlier. We learned a lot about the Distinguished uh, Captains logo in the NFL and about what the stars mean and all that stuff, just for those that didn't know. You know, four, four stars means a gold star, baby. But uh, Aaron Rodgers, I don't know if he's got the captain patch or not, but my question is to you. Here we are, what is this, like year 13, year 14 of Rodgers' career? I don't even know. But is he what you would consider a good locker room leader? You think about the quarterbacks in the league, you know, sometimes all you need is a good leader to be a good quarterback. And you can even ignore some of the skills they have because they're such a good leader. Where is Aaron Rodgers following that for you? What type of leader do you think that locker room looks at to him? I don't think they look at him as a leader at all. At he, all. He goes out there and just constantly shits on guys. Throws everybody under the yeah. bus. So who do they under he, the bus? He don't just shit on the franchise. He shits all over his teammates. He don't take accountability for anything. And, like, he don't ever come back and even apologize. Even a half heart and, like, apology. He's never yeah. apologized for anything. It's no. always Green Bay taking the high road. And then they keep bringing his ass back. And it's like, he just, he thinks he runs that He's, place. He does run that place. He's got them by the balls and there's nothing well, they can do about it. I think it. it's time to let go. But they, they had their chance to do that. They bet on him instead of Devontae. Uh, when he was even <laughs> talking about 
maybe the guys shouldn't be getting reps that are making mistakes. It's like, hey, by the way, my coach is an idiot too. Yeah, We've won 13 yeah, games we're, we're each just, of the last three We're years, running the but, offense terribly. You know, yeah. we're calling bad plays. Maybe some guys don't need to be seeing the field. Like, just everything he can possibly do. And like, let's not, get traded? let's not talk about how he's like, what, 19th or 20th in QBR this year? Or he's maybe not it's, playing well. It's, it might even be worse than that. I might be generous uh, if someone wants to look that up. But he... He's just been terrible. And if you're Green Bay, like, have you learned nothing from the Favre experience of the past? Like, I, I know. When to cut ties. Like, like, just when to move on. And Well, I think that the reason that they're still hanging on to Rodgers, because when they had Rodgers behind Favre, they got to see Rodgers in OTAs, and they were like, okay, he's talented. Right. We can give a chance. So you're saying they don't feel that way about Jordan Love. Yeah, they're stuck <laughs> with the Rodgers. But, like, if you're – again, we can talk about a lot of quarterbacks. If you're Green Bay – and that's your situation you're dealt with. And you just look out to the West Coast a little bit, and you see a team like Seattle who – do you know they're starting like six rookies? Like two rookie tackles, three guys on defense. Why? Because they got all these draft picks for Russ, and then they're decide- – you know, they, they've signed Geno Smith to a one-year deal four years in a row. Like why have they done that? And then when they got Locke, you can go back and play the tape and they ask Pete Carroll how you feel about Locke. And he's like, well, we got Gino. He's like, well, what do you mean you got Gino? Because nobody's seen him play in years. Yeah. They knew something we didn't. So to your point, Pete Carroll and the Seahawks were like, we're going to ride Gino Smith. They knew that coming into the season. Just like reference to Matt Flynn last week in our yeah. trivia <laughs> shout out. When they had Matt Flynn, they knew they were going to Russ Wilson the second they drafted him. So if you're Green Bay, why don't you just look at what Seattle's doing and say, damn it, let's just cut ties while we can. So I look at Green Bay similar as I do the Pittsburgh Steelers because they've been consistent for all these years. They're winners. And they don't. I don't think they want to turn that page for their fans. But you're absolutely right. We're at that crossroads where – they have to do something, and Seattle will be a great place to start for a blueprint. But, I mean, to me, I feel like they've been putting a Band-Aid on it for the last four or five years. <laughs> we know that Green Bay, with what they've got, because they have no skill players, other than yep. the backfield, which they refuse to use. <laughs> yeah, that's um, the thing that's the most They're not winning at all. They're no. not winning at all. Well, the thing is, if they turn it around like Chad's saying, all of a sudden they're going to become like the Chicago Bears. How long has it been since they had a quarterback and were good? Rex Grossman took them to the Super Bowl. Uh, it's just so – they don't want to become the Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions of the division or of the, the NFC. They want the next quarterback they can Could you to. trade him midseason? You could. There'd be uh, takers. But, but they, they can't because of their quarterback situation, right? Like well, they that's just punting on the season if they do that. I mean, right. Just but, punt on the damn season. Because they're not going to win, right? Or, or is the division so – but, like, the Vikings are probably going to win 12 games. After this week, they're going to be three games behind the Vikings in the standings, and they already lost to them once. I, I, don't, I don't see them setting the world on fire. Like, don't get me wrong. It's Aaron Rodgers, and we've said this before, and then he comes back and just lights the world on fire. But – he don't have the same team and cast around him. I just find it very and unlikely. An inept coaching staff. Yeah, I mean, just ask him. He'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, just – I just, believe on that point. <laughs> well, I mean, for all the issues they've had on offense and issues with their offensive line, like Mr. Brown was saying, they got A.J. Dillon, who they signed to a contract. A.J. Aaron Jones they gave the big deal to. Why are they not touching the ball 25, 30 times a game between the two of them? I, if not more. Because they, they got a – Make the situation worse, so we got something to talk about. All right, last, last quarterback uh, roulette here. So uh, we we said in the uh, teaser for the show that someone can make airlines even weirder, and that's Russ Wilson because they just had a uh, transatlantic flight to go play in London against the Jaguars this weekend. And what was the the story that came out about the flight, Bigs? Uh, he was doing knee highs down the aisle for four of the eight hours while his teammates little, were sleeping. Little calisthenics. Yep. You know, Mr. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> I can't think of him. Under li- unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. He's, uh, being, uh, just weird all just the time. Just type, was it on YouTube? Yeah. So just type in Russ Wilson Unlimited. Un- Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. It's, it's so cringy. You gotta say it right. I know, but it's cringy. I refuse to say it because I'm not going to be as cringy as his weird ass. He is. How do we not know how weird he was in Seattle? We just overlooked it because he was a winner. Now that he's not winning, we got to just call it out. Like, if you're doing these knee-high calisthenics in the middle of your flight down the aisle and you're running away at the AFC West, that's great. But you can't even beat 
So the, the JV team. So I mean, like, you can't I, beat the practice I, squad. I, I get that, like uh, Richard Sherman, like just rips on people and doesn't ever let up. And and he's ripped on Russ before by saying that he never had a relationship with him and he's not really a locker room leader. It, it, and you know, you're kind of like, oh, you're just salty because you're not in the Legion of Boom anymore, and you got sent to San Francisco and all that stuff. So maybe there's some truth to this. So we talked about how bad Aaron Rodgers might be a, a, a locker room leader. Is Russ equally as bad, just in a different way? Is he just so weird that nobody relates to him? I think just no one takes him seriously because he's so weird. Like, how do you even relate to that? Guy? He's too like on brand all the time. He is the, there is a Key and Peele skit of, uh, 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 interracial couple going to a dinner and then like she's asking him, like, you need to be black Jeff right now. Now I need you to be white Jeff. And it's like, <laughs> Russ has the broken switch. He doesn't know what he's supposed to be. And he's like, I, I, so everything is just fake all the time. It's because he spends too much time trying to make sure he doesn't poop. In an interview he recently did, he said, Life is a continuous battle against what he calls wasted seconds. The biggest culprits are eating, sleeping, and yes, using the facilities. Wilson, I may wear the number two on my chest, but my goal is to reduce my need to BM down to once Wait, a week. Wait, did you just say he wants a number two on his chest? <laughs> he Cleveland wants a Cleveland steamer. steamer? Is that what? That's all I heard just now. There's more in there, but that is an actual statement from an uh, interview in the Hey, athletic. he's just trying to copy Brady and the spice. You know, it, it's all about the poo. The yeah. TB12 has already been taken. you got to find a different method. Yeah, I, I don't know why we got to be talking about poo as far as performance enhancement goes. I do know there's probably some credibility there with all those stories because he has gone on record about spending money on investing in his body. He's got like the hyperbolic time chamber at his house or some shit like that. Like, well, I, I don't know what he's pull doing. pull a hamstring if he's got all that? And a what? torn labrum. And- well, he was just looking forward to that uh, long plane ride. And yeah. doing, I mean, plane rides suck enough. Now you got, you think about the drink cart being annoying, hitting your elbow. Next thing you know, you're trying to take a nap and you got this guy. You know, just going nuts. It's like, it's almost like the WWE plane rod from hell. Look that up. Children. So that thing I sent you that I saw on, I don't know if it's Instagram or YouTube or something like that, but it's from the, the first grown ups. Rob Schneider's up there at the funeral. That is Russell Wilson in real life every day. Yeah. Just over the top in the locker room. They have a video of him preseason coming onto the field the first time for practice with his helmet on. He's fake high fiving people coming out of the Cause top. he's got to get used to what that's going to look like. Yeah. He's just so weird, man. And, and, and it sucked because, like, I felt like Russ was always a guy you rooted for. And I don't know if I just didn't see it before. Like, yeah. it's just, and I guess that's what happens when you win. You're just like, everybody's just haters, right? It's like, nah, dude's kind of weird. He's a fruit, man. There's something wrong with him. Yeah. I don't know. Because you'd always have the Gohawks. He was such, like, a college QB at the NFL level that I think he got a pass on some of the weird stuff he does. Uh, and and now he can't make the throws, and, and he's just not – He's not like not even close to performing. Like you got him in your fantasy league in the hardcore football league that we've been doing for twenty years. It's ruined your season. It's my demise, my downfall, my dumb shit move. <laughs> and it's like, let's ride. What what kind of vehicle are we driving, and where are we going? You know, what I mean. And when does it start? It's starting now, <laughs> and it's going right off the cliff. <laughs> All right, I feel like it's been forever. You know, we went through the baseball playoffs, and it was like every day there's a game, or every other day there was a game when we got the eliminations out of the way. And it's been what feels like 84 years now since we've last had a baseball game. Mr. Brown, I know you got to be going through withdrawal. But uh, tomorrow the World Series returns, correct? Yeah, we open up on Friday, and uh, I'm not really having withdrawals because of the two teams that are in it, so I'm fine. Not super excited about the Phillies and Strohs? I'm not. I mean, I, I want Dusty to get his ring because he deserves one, but uh, other than that, I could care less, to be honest. <laughs> I asked uh, a friend of mine who's a big-time Cubs fan earlier if he wanted to see Dusty. He's like, hell no. The guy that ran Mark Pryor and Kerry Wood into the ground? <laughs> nah, he don't need shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, Dusty makes it easy in this matchup to root for the Astros just because so many people like him. I will say the one thing I hope to get out of this is some iconic uh, Bryce Harper moments like the whole run to send him. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's got to be good for business if you're, uh, Major League Baseball, big star like Bryce Harper coming through in the postseason. Well, like we've talked about it before with Mike Trout, where he's an amazing player, but you don't see him on the big stage. I just like seeing the guys that are the studs of the game perform. No, I mean, you're, you're, so, you're right. 
So uh, I'm not supposed to say this because I'm a Braves fan, but I love me some Bryce Harper. I drafted him in first round of fantasy. Um, I feel like he just rises to the occasion. And what's weird is him and Aaron Judge are the same age. Um, only Aaron Judge came into the league at 24. Took him a little longer And to then get there. Bryce came in at age 19 and completely different playoff uh, uh, success <laughs> this year. Um, so to me, I mean – I think Bryce, he's carrying the team, but why would you pitch to the guy right now? I don't think you should. Um, But I don't think he's enough. I don't think he's enough. So you're saying already leaning toward the Astros to bring home the title? Is that what you're saying? Can we say that now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they haven't lost a game. You can't tell me that Philly can beat them four times. It's not going to happen. No, and Philly is probably the team that benefited most of just timing when it came to the playoffs, right? Like, they were super hot coming in. They they rode that wave. And the fact that they exercised some divisional demons in the process and all that, you know, it's a good story. But I'm kind of with you. This is where that story kind of uh, ends, is it not? See, I'm kind of sitting on the other side of that because each of the last four teams to enter the World Series without a postseason loss up to that point have lost. 88 and 90 A's, 2007 Rockies, nice 2014 stat. Royals. Nice stat. Uh, uh, I don't buy it, though. <laughs> it's a great stat. But I just think the Astros, their, their pitching overall is, I think, enough. And is, is the Phillies' offense better than the Astros' offense? Nah, I'd take the Astros. That's what I'm saying. Like Cal so. Tucker, Biggie showed me the video earlier. They was asking him about predictions, and he was like, oh, we want to win them four. We want to make it quick. Yeah, I mean, like, we ain't messing around. Usually it's like, oh, we got two good teams. Let's see how it goes. We're both going to give it our best. He said he brought up a sweep just specifically to the reporter. Dude, and, <laughs> and since April, we've been on the Astros as the best team in the American League. Like, I mean, well, maybe a little later, but like they were right there with the Yankees. Even the Yankees were kicking ass. It's like, well, the Astros are only three games behind them. And they, they had the consistency model all year long. The Phillies are not somebody we've talked about. So you're rather going with the known commodity that's been there time and time again that, you know, trash cans are not. They're there. And then you got the Phillies, who are a nice story. And, again, you'd like to see some more heroics out of Bryce Harper. But I think that, I think it's like a 4-2 series. I doubt it's a sweep. And um, I, that, old re- that whole rhetoric about the trash can nonsense is so old and played out at this point. We're talking about 2017. We're five years into this, and some of the members remain. Half the team's gone, or more than half, new manager. And they've been there six straight years. So, I mean, get over it. Well, get I, think, over it. I think the reason why people aren't over it is because they felt like they never got punished. But is them. that the Astros' fault? I mean, no, it's, it's not. It's MLB's it's fault. Not. Don't it's, be mad at the Astros. Well, and then, like, what do you even do, right? Like, I mean, they, they made them fire their coach. I mean. But, I mean, if your team got caught cheating, would you be mad that the MLB let them off? You know what I mean? No. I mean, no. you can't get mad about it. Well, and, again, not to admit that everyone's, like, innocent or guilty here, but, like, Everybody cheats. Like, everybody's even, getting Even the baseball players in the group, they're like, you know, everyone cheats. Everyone looks for that edge. Everybody does. I they don't care if it's, a, caught. if it's a substance. What, we have Jack McDowell the one day tell us about the White Sox having to light out in the right. outfield. I mean, it, it, And that was back in the 90s. Like, yeah. I mean, so it's like whatever you got to do. So I have a question for you guys. Do you think that our economy, the United States, is getting ready to crash? Oh, <laughs> because the Philadelphia Phillies could be the catalyst for just a horrible recession. Is that the case? Did you guys see over the last hundred years? Just tell everybody. Tell everybody what the story is. So over the last hundred years, the three previous times, the uh, Phillies or a baseball team from Philadelphia, because it was the Athletics Athletics. in 1929, have won the world championship. Uh, It is signaled an impeding financial crisis. So what, crisis. Were the, what were the years here? So we're 1929. Already, we're already right. borderline crisis now, so how bad is it going to get? So 29, it got bad after 29. 1980, we had the gas shortages and, uh-huh. and all that nonsense. 2008, the housing market crash. Yeah, oh, Lord. We're, so so what's 2022 hold for us? Did the Astros win and save America, or did something else crash? <laughs> That's They may not be the hero you want, but they're the hero you need. This is your Houston Astros. <laughs> I mean, do you want to lose everything you got or do you want them to beat on trash cans? <laughs> Choose wisely. 
Right, we might be living in trash cans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Phillies win. We're going to stay warm and burn in them. <laughs> Alright, it's time to play that beautiful music. And we are back once again for week eight of our NFL Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks. And you know what? We had a week last week where none of us had a losing record. Uh, Biggie was 7-7. Seven and seven. He holds on to first place out of the four of us. Uh, Turbo, though, went 9-5. and five. Mr. Brown, you and I went 8-6. and six. We're starting to get a little more respectable, but man, it's a it's a gained by an inch type thing. The freaking Bears, man! I'm still pissed about that one. Our our weeks could have been so good, uh, and just the way the the latter part of the the week wrapped up was devastating. So hopefully we can have another solid performance here. Biggie's been consistently in the top hundred nationally for us, and honestly like if you're 10 games over 500 at this point you're in the top 10 like it's yeah. you're, you're amazing it has been the most difficult year when it comes to picks uh, as far as the NFL goes like if you're above 500 you're great and you're making a lot of money right like it and it like we're not trying to defend like how bad our performance is here we've been doing picks for a minute we've been doing them for three years now. And, uh, you know, so we've seen what good looks like. And you know what? Hard times, though, have struck the the show. And instead of just, like, getting all our gambling winnings and investing it back in, we've had to go and get some sponsors. So we just want you to know that these picks are sponsored to you by Sky Bacon Bacon Bombers. They're one-and-a-half-inch firecrackers. They are explosive. They are consumer fireworks so you can get them at your local fireworks stand and they are endorsed by one and only jason pierre paul baby pop pop get your bacon bombs today how much did you pay for these you know those were know. three dollars and 99 cents for the football draft hey it says uh use only under close adult supervision for outdoor use only do not hold in hand or throw firecrackers. Place on ground, light fuse, and get away. Never attempt to relight a fuse. Never attempt to light firecrackers in a closed container. And never carry firecrackers in clothing. Biggie, you violated all of these. Jason Pierre Paul would not approve. When it comes to fireworks, you let the experts handle it. And that is the adults who have been drinking all day. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of drinking, uh, this has been uh, Sober October for Chad, the Mark, and Mr. Brown. Oh, boy. Uh, other than caffeine, right? Fair enough? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it's been a nice uh, nice stretch for us. I don't know how far I want to keep it going. If I keep doing bad at picks, I might go to the sauce early. I- I'm actually 60 days in. 60 days. Can we get a round of applause for our man, Mr. Brown? 60 days. Ah, uh, man. And he looks damn good now. Don't forget, he's got a Halloween costume you can find online. Go to baseball page and you'll find it. But, he's uh, really enhancing those calves. Oh, let's uh, let's get the to kangles. the let's get to the picks, and we'll talk about Kangles later. Uh, the Ravens and Bucks we mentioned earlier. Uh, it's a two point spread for the home team Bucks. We all took the Ravens except for Biggie, who's a lone wolf. And I think the the Ravens just took the lead. They're up by seven. They're up by seven, so they're going to cover as of right now. Uh, let's move on. Let's just get to the London game. We've talked about Russ and Les Ride. And uh, what's his name? Mr. Uh, Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. Uh, he's doing his calisthenics all the way to London, where the Jaguars are a two-and-a-half point fav- home favorite, I guess. And uh, where's the money coming at in on this one, Mr. Brown? Well, not really surprising. Right now, Vegas is coming on 71% for the Jags. And I'm like, I had a blip. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> seizure. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going to take the Jags, who all the money is on, because like you guys said, it's a de facto home game for them. Plus, uh, fuck the Broncos. Don't, don't swallow your tongue next pick. Uh, Mr. Brown, who you got? Mr. Unlimited Seizures. Just so flustered by <laughs> Russ Wilson. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I said it last week. I'm never picking the Broncos again this year. I'm holding true to that. I'm going Jags. Duval! We're going Jags across the board. No way we're riding with the Broncos again. So hopefully we gave you some of the We Don't Know Sports karma there, Denver. Uh, all right, the Panthers on the road to the ATL. The Falcons are a four point home favorite. Where's the money at? We got 62% coming in on the Falcons right now, which is higher than I would think. 
a little bit higher than I would think also with the way the Panthers played last week, but that's an outlier for them. They're going to return to dog crap this week. Give me the Falcons to cover. So you think that 21 to 3 over your Bucks was an anomaly? Yes, because uh, <laughs> they had been trying to trade away their entire franchise the previous week, so I don't know how they won that game. Yeah, I mean, we were all about Mariota last week, you know, the second uh, career here, but uh, I don't know, this is tough for me. I'm just going to pick the Falcons just because of the home team and no other reason. I'm thinking home team, who's the quarterbacks? Am I going with the XFL and P.J. Walker, or am I going to ride Mariota? Uh, you know what? Uh, the uh, the Falcons are that team that put the ass women on the 49ers not too long ago, so I'm going to pretend like that's still the team out there. They're not playing the Bengals who uh, uh, you know took advantage of the Falcons having an entirely wounded secondary, so Falcons across the board. All right, this is a big spread. The Chicago Bears coming off a big win. A huge win, Biggie. The uh, Bears going into Big D. Dallas is a nine and a half point home favorite. And you got 63% of the money rolling in on Chicago. Woo! And I'm going to be the outlier here. I like what I see in Dallas last week, the way they played in the second half. I think the offense will get going even a little bit more this week. What I was just saying about the Panthers, that's like the best game the Bears played all year. Did you see what Roquan Smith looked like when they told him during his uh, press around Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever, that they had just traded Robert Quinn? No. No, he looked like the soul left his body. I think that's uh, His soul left his body a long team. time ago. He doesn't even want to be there. He was a holdout, remember? All right, here you got, Mr. Brown. So, if you actually watched the game, which I know Biggie did, he, well, he cried half of the game Sunday night, but – or Monday Big night, course. whatever night, Monday night. So that was the best game plan they've made for Phil since he's been a star. Absolutely, they absolutely skill or used his skill set to their advantage. He looked good for what they did. I think they at least cover this. I don't think they win, but I think they do cover against Dallas. You know, it's a it's a big spread. Uh, if it was seven, I might lean toward Dallas, but nine and a half, I, it's going to be a sloppy game. I think. I, I still don't think Dallas is completely dialed in. And uh, they play. Who they play last week was the Lions. 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 Yeah, and, and they the, covered. Yeah, I got that uh, one right. They, so uh, I, I just don't think uh, they they blow the Bears out here. I think the Bears will keep it uh, ugly enough, and and it'll it'll be a, a relatively low scoring game, eight seven maybe, not nine and a half. So uh, you're the lone wolf, Biggie. In the life of a ranger on the prairie. Are you, are you singing Walker at Texas Rangers? <laughs> I wanted to, and I remembered. I didn't remember <laughs> the words. In the eyes of a ranger are a boy. No, stop. Because that's what a <laughs> ranger has got to be, or something like that. <laughs> Do you ever see the song by Chuck Wait, Morris? Have you ever seen the Conan O'Brien skit where they had the lever for uh, the Walker Texas Ranger I have uh, not. skits? Oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. All right, the Dolphins on the road to Detroit. The hapless Lions at home are giving three and a half to the Dolphins, who are the favorite. The road favorite, 73% rolling in on the Dolphins. Watching them last week against Pittsburgh with Tua back, looked a little bit more competent on offense. I like them to cover this on the road. The Lions last week coming off a bye were pretty unimpressive. Yeah. I, I had better expectations for the Lions coming into the season. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to make the playoffs or anything, but I felt like with uh, Campbell and the way they were trending last year, I felt like there was going to be, you know, borderline, uh, like, at least, you know, competitive. Yeah, like, you know, if they had seven, eight wins or were in, like, the wild card you. hunt. Yeah, yeah but, no, nah, the Lions are doing lion shit. <laughs> so, they are. Uh, so, we're, we're Dolphins across the board here. Uh, This is a game that they can play really, really safe. And it's only three and a half. So if the Dolphins win by four or more, you got the cover. Uh, I I like them. And, you know, the Lions have been covered darlings for us, but they're they're losing that luster here, right? They're they're just falling away. Uh, So we're across the board. When ownership comes out and gives you the dreaded vote of confidence. Oh, no. Yes. That's never a good sign. Uh, Speaking of uh, vote of confidence, uh, the Cardinals go to the Vikings. The Vikings are a three and a half point home favorite, and my vote of confidence is Kyler Murray. Uh, there are uh, double XP points this weekend on Call of Duty, so uh, just keep that in mind as you make your picks. Uh, where's the money at? This is surprising. Fifty six percent only going towards Minnesota. Mm. You know, I really usually like teams coming off a of buy. The Arizona Cardinals are coming off a of mini buy, having played the Thursday night game. The Vikings are coming off a of real buy. They're at home. 
and there's a Call of Duty out. I like the Vikings to cover. Yeah, I like the Vikings as well. Like we said earlier, they're a 12-win team at minimum. They're going to run away at that division, and like they're rolling despite uh, the Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> So this is an interesting game. I feel like um, the Cardinals are starting to get some pieces back uh, healthy. I mean, you got is uh, Hopkins back this week? Yeah, last, last week. week. Last week, so he's back again this week. Uh, now they got a little bit of time to jail. Uh, and for whatever reason, Kirk Cousins will Kirk Cousins in the most Kirk Cousins time. And I feel like that's this week. So I am taking the Cardinals to go into Minnesota and get the cover. I don't know if they win. But I feel like it's going to be one of those games that comes down to a field but goal. But he's playing the short black Kirk Cousins. <sighs> you know, At 1 o'clock, this that's isn't not, my time. That's <laughs> how this goes. No, Kyler Murray is not. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. Because he's too fast. None of this works. No, none of this works. He's too fast. He's too fast. Oh. Uh, so uh, I'll give you. So, Mr. Brown, you took the Vikings, right? So I'm the uh, lone wolf here. So uh, I don't. Tweet, tweet, or. I don't know what a cardinal do. That's that's all I can do. It's our state bird, damn it. You don't know the sound it makes? No, I don't I barely see them. They don't come around my house. Uh, All right, the uh, Raiders on the road to Nolans. Who's the quarterback for Nolans? The Red Red Rifle. Rifle. Red Rifle. The uh, Raiders are one point road favorite. It's basically a pick 'em. 68%'s coming in on Vegas. Vegas taking Vegas is taking Vegas. Yeah. I myself like the Raiders. That bye week treated them well. The offense last week actually looked like we kind of all thought it would all year. I think that'll continue. We're the worst team in the the league against the pass. Um, I feel like uh, the Red Rifle is going to light us up and actually maybe throw, you know, six touchdowns. You know, not not to the Raiders, of course. Oh, it's at least one. Yeah. So you got the Saints. I do. Is, is this just you can't pick your team? I'm just done with the You're Raiders. You're done with them. Done with them like you are the Broncos. Uh, I, I think the Raiders get the win here. Uh, the Saints uh, are slowly just on this downward spiral. and uh, Plus, I, I need it for fantasy. You do need it for fantasy, but maybe it can just be a high-scoring affair. I think uh, Jacobs is going to run wild on him, and that's just what's going to happen. I think he's game. ran for 140 yards for four straight games, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so uh, that's, right? a, that's a recipe for success here in Nolan. So you're lone wolfing it, taking now uh, the red rifle. Oh, in the Saints, go marching in. When the Saints go marching in. See, I always thought you were going to do, you know, shoot your eye out or something. Like you were red right. Sorry, but that's all right. We'll go with the Saints because that's uh, that's who you pick. Biggie, your Patriots on the road to the Jets. This is a very interesting game because somehow the Patriots are still favored at two and a half. Uh, I'm curious. I want to know where's the money at on this one. 68% on the J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. I feel like this game sets up like last week's Giants at Jags game, where the Jags were a home favorite for some reason. You couldn't figure out why. It's just because Vegas wanted to make some money off the Giants for once. Uh, I have no idea why the Patriots are the are the road favorite here. Three and four. Jets have won four straight, but I don't care because we're going to beat them like we did last year. 79-19 outscored them in two games. This is where the Patriots get right. Matt Jones gets some cheers back from the Boston faithful. Give me the Patriots to come. They're going to get cheers in New York? Oh, yeah. They're going to convert. All right. He's well, bringing his mom's So well. There's one team here who knows who their quarterback is and one team who doesn't. So I'm taking the team that knows who's starting and who's going to play the whole game. So I'm taking Zach Wilson and his mother and the Jets. They're going to cover. They're going to win. I, I like how the Patriots have become the team of turmoil. Like the locker room is uncertain. We don't know who the QB is. And Belichick is being very misleading about what's happening right now. I hate picking this game. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to pick every game like we do here at We Don't Know Sports. Like, we're contractually obligated to fulfill this with Pick Watch. We have to do all of this. Avoid this. Avoid this game. Do not pick this game. But I'm begrudgingly taking the Jets. Uh, But, man, why do I not feel like uh, that's a good one? Because the Patriots own the Jets, and this is just another chance for them to continue to own them. But Robert Sala's taking his list, and he's he's telling the Patriots, you just made the list. So, uh... You're the lone wolf, Biggie. Oh, when Mac Jones 
comes marching in. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and that Jones comes stopping down your throat. He'll run for a touchdown on this one. You can eat that receipt. And he's going to do the you. gritty. And it's going to be that meme that it's like, and Mac Jones finds the end zone. And that's another touchdown as the Patriots are now down 49 to 14. And that, that's going to be how it goes. All right. I wish Tommy was here because uh, the Steelers going to the other side of the state, playing the Eagles, who are coming off a bye week, if I'm not mistaken. The Eagles are a 10.5-point home favorite. And you got 57% coming in on the Eagles. Mm. So this is a really big spread, and it's one of those where the Steelers were competitive last week, at least kept uh, got the cover for us at 8.5. But if the Dolphins' offense was better last week, they would have easily won by two scores. I feel like the uh, Eagles coming off the bye week, this should be Jack, just traded for Robert Quinn. We know they can get out early. I think that they cover this, and they might win really ugly. I think in the battle of PA, it's going to be sloppy. I feel like the Eagles win, but, I mean, they got the mounting pressure of when are we going to lose our first game in the back of their minds. So I feel like the Steelers are going to keep it close. You're right, man. They're going to eventually start hearing that like a pitcher in the seventh inning with a no-hitter going. Like don't you, talk about it. You don't talk about it, but you know it's going to happen. Um, Ten and a half is a big spread, but the Steelers are terrible. And, and I just think the Eagles – are dialed in right now. We haven't really seen too many flaws. They get up really early. And uh, you're telling me that Pickett throwing the ball, being down like multiple scores is going to be a recipe for uh, success? I I don't think so. I got the Eagles. Like Biggie said, they're going to win, and they're going to win ugly in this one. Ewan's got any fries for my burger. <laughs> That's gross for Manny Brothers. Why do people hype that up? It's so disgusting. Let's put a bunch of coleslaw and fries on a burger. Yens. Yenses. i take a pierogi, though. Yes. I like a pierogi. All right. The Titans and the Texans. Did they, did they, is this the ones that tied earlier in the year? Or is that the Colts? And the that was the Colts and the All Texans. Right. All right. So the, <laughs> this could be a tie. The Texans at home are giving two and a half back to the Titans, who are the road favorites. So this one's the spread blows my mind. It blows Vegas' mind currently because 83% is rolling in on Tennessee. I think this is the easiest pick of the week. You got Tennessee coming off a bye week, and they had won four straight going into that bye week. They're going to be ready to roll here. They'll win by two scores, I'd say. So I was mocked when I was talking about Tennessee in that division beginning of the year. Um, (laughs) They're slowly doing what they do by grinding down their opponents. And they're on, I think, a four-game winning streak, I believe. So, Tennessee's going to win big. I think they win about at least 10. Yeah, I, I can't add anything to this. I think the Texans are, you know, is Lovey Smith going to be there after this year? Probably not, but not of his own fault. Like, this team just sucks. Does he still they're have young. the beard? Yeah. Great it's, beard. It's little, Blanta. It's a little pat. Yeah, it's Blanta. Blanta beard. I like that, baby. That was good. Uh, so, yeah, Titans across the board. Nothing to see here. Move along. You're not going to watch this game anyway unless you have Derrick Henry on your fantasy team. Um, the commanders, the commies, the emails on the road to the Colts who fired their quarterback in favor of uh, the young kid from Texas, Sam Ellinger, getting a start this week. Uh, the Colts are favored with the new quarterback. Which and- blows my mind. 73% is coming in on Washington. Sorry, 75, 75. On Washington. Correct. They're feeling Tyler, Taylor, Tyler, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Heineke. 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 Chad, how much are the Colts favored by? Three. What does Vegas give the home team if they think it's even? Three. Who's playing quarterback for the Washington Come on, my boss. <laughs> Heineke. He's going to get a beer commercial with Heineken after he wins this game. I have zero faith in the Colts whatsoever. Um, neither does Vegas. So I'm taking the emails to cover this. I can't believe that much money's coming in on them. I, of course, I saw this spread, and I'm like, I'm definitely taking Washington here. because 75%. How much is this line going to change? Like, It's going to be an ugly game. I wonder if it's already changed quite yeah. a bit. I wish we would have looked earlier in the week. I, I'm across the board. I have nothing to add here. Uh, you know, I forget that Taylor Heineke is actually a pretty decent quarterback. Like, he, he got them to the playoffs one year. Uh, you know, he's he's never that bad. He, he's like a um, – I'm trying to think, like, who is his comp? Like, Heineke's comp. Like, he he's not a – he's never going to make a Pro Bowl. But he's like a – I don't know. He, like, on a good day, maybe he's a Mark Brunel. I don't know. You know, I, I just can't think of what he is. But he's a winner. He's going to find a way to get it done. He's – who's better, Jimmy Garoppolo or Taylor Heineke? 
Give me Taylor Heineke. I mean, it's, it's it's kind of a comparison, I guess. I don't know. Heineke's like an identity identityless Kirk Cousins. Yes, he is. Uh, <laughs> he's the unknown Kirk Cousins. <laughs> unknown Kirk Cousins for the win. Uh, maybe he can get like six franchise tags there too, oh, like no. uh, Cousins once did. All right, this sounded like it once was uh, the game of the week, but both have kind of not impressed lately. The 49ers on the road to the Rams. The Niners are one and a half point. A road favorite, and let's be honest, uh, Little Shanahan just owns the Rams. And you got 66% rolling in on the Niners right now. I think that uh, I'll go where the money is on this one. I think the second weekend there for CMC, he'll be a much bigger part of their offense. And like we were saying earlier, the Rams, I don't know, a Super Bowl hangover. They got old quick. Uh, I don't even think that this game's going to stay within 7 to 10 points. Yeah, and you could tell it was a quick turnaround for CMC last week with the trade. They were just kind of giving him the ball. He didn't have much in the playbook, just kind of trying to have him do what he does. Um, I feel like an extra week, he's going to be more prepared. It's going to be a nice game plan. Plus, they're going to be pissed off coming off of the Chiefs handing their ass to him. So I'm going with the Niners in this. He actually gets a full week of practice. He didn't even get a week of practice last week, last game. So. Uh, and it's not even that. It's not even that CMC. I think if they didn't have him, the Rams just aren't right. Everything Biggie said, uh, you don't have Whitworth holding down that side of the line anymore. You, Allen Robinson's been a disaster to try to be the guy opposite of Cooper Cup. Uh, their running game, I think both their backs are banged up right now. Like nothing. And, and look, Stafford's probably got a bad elbow. Like that was the story in the preseason. He hasn't been right either. Uh, and I think uh, this will be, what, the ninth game in a row Shannon covers against them? It should be. Uh, it's, it's ugly, sir. Are we Niners across the board? Is that what I heard right? Gold digging. All right. So uh, the Giants and the Seahawks. All of a sudden, the game of the week. The G-Men going out to the West Coast where the Seahawks have been really impressive the past couple weeks, and Geno has not been throwing the ball more than 30 times all of a sudden because they found a running game. So I love this game. I, I think this could have been flexed to the Sunday night game almost. Not really. I'm just excited to see this matchup. The Giants uh, going into Seattle. Seattle is a three-point home favorite. And right now you have 59% of the money coming in on the Giants. Mm. This is a tough game to pick for me because I love the way Seattle's been playing, but... All season long, I have not been a believer in the Giants, and they just find a way to win games at the end. So I'm going to take them to win this game outright. I've been a huge believer in the Giants so far this year. However, Geno is in the running and probably the front runner for comeback player of the year. He's, um, and they're at home. you got the 12-man there. I feel like Seattle covers. I feel like they win this game. My thing with Seattle is I'm trying to look at, like, the trends and how they've been doing lately. And since they lost to the Niners, they lost to New Orleans on a crazy play from Taysom Hill. They should have won that game. Then you also had the game um, last week against the Chargers to where I wouldn't think in a million years the Chargers lose that game, and, and they do. And then that was coming off a week before where they beat the Cardinals. So those are two teams that we would think are playoff teams. And Seattle has gotten that win. Uh, I think they get it here just because they're at home. I think it's a tough game. Man, three is probably a push. If they, I, I don't know. I hate picking against the Giants because they have just been stubborn against the spread. But uh, I'm with Mr. Brown on Seattle here. I'm taking the Seahawks in that newly found running game. So you give me Danny Dimes, I'm going to line him up at wide receiver and start Saquon Barkley because he's going to come marching into Seattle and walk out with all their women. Is that – what? <laughs> I don't even know what's happening now. All right, so speaking of lone wolves, let's, let's go back to the Thursday night game where Biggie's a lone wolf and they just panned to the Bucks fans crying in the stands as the Ravens took an 11-point lead. 24-13. So uh, give me your lone giant. Come on. G-I-A-N-T-S. Let's go, Big Tuna. <laughs> That's, some of our millennial listeners won't understand that reference. Uh, how about the uh, Packers and Bills? Looked like it would have been a great Sunday night slate at the beginning of the season. But the Bills find themselves up 11. What a the biggest spread of the week. 59% is rolling in on Buffalo currently. I feel like I'm at Thanksgiving with a spread this big. 
I think this is going to be like when the Bills played the Steelers a couple weeks ago, and I really thought the Steelers would go in and keep it close, <laughs> and they lost like 48 to nothing, 48 to three or whatever. So you think it's just going to be an assault? I, do, I think Aaron Rodgers coming out with all that negativity towards the team just doesn't help anything, and they're not playing well. They, like Mr. Brown said, they got two stud running backs. They don't know how to use either one. You know what Aaron Rodgers needs? To, uh, so you're going with the, the Bills. He's taking the Bills off a of bye week to cover this thing. You know what Aaron Rodgers needs to read? And I hope he's listening to our show. He needs to read the energy bus. Because he's a damn energy vampire right now. Mm, he's sucking To the whole out. franchise of Green Bay. If you're a stakeholder for the Packers and you have stock there, he, everyone needs to buy him a copy of the energy bus. Bills! I also take the bills. <laughs> I have nothing to add. I, it's such a big spread. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers, the only thing that's going to change is tune into the Pat McAfee show next week to hear Aunt Rodgers actually request a trade. How about that? So we're across the board. That's an 11-point spread that we all align with. Uh, I think it's just all of us hate Aaron Rodgers now. I, I, you have no confidence in them to win another game this year. No, the Bills have looked great. They've been our number one team all year long, so it's kind of hard not to like them at home. Remember, it wasn't too long ago, like week two, week three, maybe even week four, the Packers still were, like, hanging around our power rankings. But, like, I don't think they've even sniffed the top ten the last three just kept weeks. giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, they got I, MVP. After this massacre, I would love to see Josh Allen just give Aaron Rodgers some sweet chin music. <laughs> <laughs> My God! Put, put him through a table. Exactly. He'd be like Marty Jannetty. Yeah. All right, the last game, the Monday Nighter. My Cincinnati Bengals going on the road to the mistake by the lake where the Browns have been surprisingly just competitive all year long. Like, they they seem to be in almost every game. Uh, The Bengals, uh, who've been on a roll here lately, they are a three-point road favorite. 81% of the money is coming in on your Bengals. I'm rolling with money here. The Bengals have really looked good the last few weeks. Joe Burrow is looking cleaner in the pocket, more comfortable. The line that they made so many changes to has really started to gel. I think that they win by 10, 13 points. Yeah, I agree with you, Big. I don't have much to add. I think it's pretty easy here to go with Cincinnati. I mean, I I hate this matchup because the the Browns always give the Bengals fits for no reason whatsoever. Interdivisional, match. yeah, just familiarity. But I, before you, I can't remember how many times growing up where I had to watch CBS coverage, a, and it was that division which yeah. I hated, and it was always close no matter what the teams were doing that year. Yeah, because they they both sucked, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, like it was just a struggle. Who can find the end zone? Uh, the the Bengals, though, I feel like they're. You know what's changed is that offensive lines got a chance to play with each other. They're protecting a little bit. Now whenever Burrow takes a sack, it's only because he's holding the ball for like seven seconds. Uh, Mixon still hasn't really uh, got going, but they haven't needed him to. They came out like last week, and they were playing the Falcons, and once they realized they were wounded in the secondary, they actually just threw the ball every freaking play because they knew they couldn't stop him. Uh, I think uh, they'll have uh, the game plan ready to go. And hopefully the offense stays dotted enough so Zach Taylor's play calling can't impact the outcome. I I got the Bengals covering. We're across the board with Houdé. All right, well, do you have any remorse? you feel good about your picks, gentlemen? I feel good about my afternoon picks because my early day picks have sucked three weeks in a row. I feel like my late week picks always fall apart. Like you're looking good. The last two weeks when we'll be texting, we go into uh, Sunday night, Mr. Brown's like – Get these next two Man, I, could, I, I got ten wins. I think you're ten, eleven wins, and you, yeah. you walk out with seven. Like what happens? It's it's so terrible. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the week eight NFL Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks. And as always, Biggie, remind people how to avoid addiction. One eight hundred Gambler. It's universal all fifty states. All right, just trying to wrap up the show after uh, exciting uh, NFL Stone Cold Lead Pipe Locks once again. Uh, but, you know, we, we're hit or miss when we talk about college football. And, you know, you had put something out the other day that, you know, we've talked about from time to time. And I can't help but notice, I, I got to bring this up before I even let you get into your point about Reggie Bush and the NIL, NIL money and what he's supposed to make. Have you seen he's like Wendy's spokesman now? He's all over these Wendy's commercials. Yeah, it's like every other day. And they're making jokes about how, like, eluding the Heisman that he got taken from him. Yeah, they gave him the burger. Yeah, there's like, oh, he does. we don't know. It's just for a limited time only, though. That's all he gets. And 
But like he's like, you know, they took it from me, mm-hmm. and now I got it back, my biggie bag or whatever the hell they're they're advertising. Yep. Uh, but uh, you know, good for you for having a sense of humor, Reggie Bush. Like that's nice. But the the fact of it is, with the NIL money all over the place, a guy like Reggie Bush, who was ahead of his time, uh, essentially, what would he have made if if this was happening when he played? The estimate is he would have made between four and six million at USC. So that's that's probably better than what a, his rookie running back deal was. Yeah, because they had the uh, like by that time they had the. Uh, pick lot or pick slot in place where right. you didn't just get the whatever they wanted to it's pay. It's wherever you get drafted, that's what you're going to get paid. See, the reason that made me think of that was Lindell White was on a podcast or a radio show last week, and he was talking about when he signed with USC, they gave him the keys to his apartment. When he unlocked the door, there was a bag in there with $150,000 cash in it. 150 that's not that much. Reggie Bush <laughs> lost his Heisman because it was reported, or they found 300000 that him and his family had accepted. Yeah. And uh, what it kind of made me think of was back to the preseason this year when Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher were getting into it over Saban saying that Texas A&M bought all their players, which turned out later they kind of did. They suspended three freshmen this week, by the way. Did you see what they suspended them for? No. Smoking pot in the locker room before the game. Before the game? Yes. Apparently they like to play high. Hey, hey, is that performance enhancing? I can't imagine it would be. I, I can see doing that after practice, you know, maybe not it's, before. It just kills me because you have these guys doing that. It's like, how quickly can the ship fall apart? Jimbo's looking for a landing spot. Like Jimbo's done, right? Yeah. Like it, they're just trying to count up the money they can get from the boosters to run his ass out of town. Yeah. He got a freaking a 10 year, $70 million uh, deal. It, it's crazy. For one good season. It's crazy that these coaches, we talked about Matt Rule getting fired in the NFL. And like you said, he could make $300,000 a week for the next like six yeah. years or something stupid. Just sitting at home. Uh, and, and yet in the NFL, players don't get guaranteed contracts. Such well, garbage. It is, man. Your union sucks, NFL. Yep. This is why I hate unions because they're, they're balls of shit that don't do anything. Like the MLB union is rock stars. Yeah. The NFL well, union. are they though? Because like the problem there is you're either a have or a have not. Like, their league minimum True. sucks. Unless you're a guy that's after your arbitration years, you're get, you're not getting paid. Um, I mean, you think about like a, a journeyman um, like Brandon Drury, uh, who we saw in the Mets, the Reds, the, the Padres all in the last like year. Like most people outside of uh, baseball fans probably don't know who the hell Brandon Drury is. But he's a guy that got traded because he was having a hell of a year. He was making like $900,000. Like it, was, it was, it sucks. Uh, and yet he goes to a team where there's multiple guys making 30 million a year. Yeah. Like it's, like, can't you imagine like you going to pick up the dinner tonight there, bud? You know, it's like, come on, man. Y'all are making like infinite times more money yep. than me. And that, that's just sports in general. But anyway, back to college football. Uh, you're, you're hoping the NIL would clean this stuff up, right? Because we've always known. College athletics have had money involved, right? Like that's always been a thing. There's always, like I remember little old Marshall University, which uh, our West Virginia listeners will remember a coach named Bob Pruitt. Mm -hmm. And he got all the uh, players at the time jobs, you know, doing quote unquote janitorial maintenance stuff. And they were making $30 an hour. And this is like in 1998. Yeah. You know, and were they really working? I don't think so. Oh, it's like the guy who can't show up at the booster who owns a car dealership and sign autographs because that's illegal. Or yeah. it used to be illegal. Now it's not. Yep. not now it's, uh, what's, uh, the, come the, down for a couple hours and I'll give you $40,000. What, what's the, uh, what's the, um, receiver? I think it's a receiver. The guy that went to Nebraska, it's got the, the cold name. Oh, the, the, the coldest, the coldest, uh, uh Oh, I don't, I don't know, know his last name. Rodriguez, for all yeah. I know. I can't remember. Dakotis Jefferson or something like that. Uh, and he's doing air conditioning commercials in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. So, you know, hey, that's beautiful, right? That's name recognition. We love yeah. it. Uh, even though Nebraska sucks at football. But, you know, they got money. But, you know, I, I'm fine. You generating all the money you pay. I always said I don't have a problem. Like, if, if you're a music scholar and you can go play the bar and take all the covered money and all that – but but you can't sign your own autograph as a football player. Yeah, that's pretty messed like, up. Yeah, that is, that is. But the point of this whole conversation was Reggie Bush and the money he could have made and things like that. Does do they need to give him back the Heisman? 
I wish they would because Heisman has nothing to do with college football as far as the governing board. You know, it's a complete different right. agency or museum that hands it's the it Heisman out. Foundation. Yeah. yeah. And in 2021, they came out and officially said that there was no chance he was getting it back. Yeah. I mean, to me, the Heisman Trophy and him not having it is like certain guys not being in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's like, come on. We know what we saw. I, I hate, I hate any time. The NCAA is notorious for this. Let's vacate wins. Let's act like it didn't happen. Yeah, like Jim Beheim, and uh, I'm trying to think. There's a couple other guys in football, but Joe Paterno, yeah, uh, you know Pete Carroll. Um, I just, yeah, let's act like Pete Carroll and USC didn't go to three straight title games, winning two and losing one of the great games ever to Texas with like a 34 game winning streak. Yeah, that never happened. I mean, just to say it didn't happen doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. Sorry, NCAA, you got this screwed up. And and look, do a do a better job creating some rules and regulations that everybody can yeah. live by, so we don't end up creating realistic this. stuff, right? right. These like, archaic guidelines that applied in 1962. But what it is is the people that got money don't want to share the money with other people, and then you yeah. got these old school sports fans who are like, "Well, they get a free education; it should be good enough." That's like saying, you know, we're going to pay for your your insurance at work so you don't have to. And you generate for the company what should be a salary of like $500,000 a year. And they're paying you $50,000 a year. And you should just be happy. We're, we're paying your, your benefits for you. Don't worry about it. Well, the dumbest thing about it has always been, like we were talking earlier, you're telling these football players on scholarship they're not allowed to work. That's why you should give them some of what you're bringing in for them. Yeah, and, and can we not agree that wouldn't it be better if we didn't pay the coaches as much? Like, how many times do you see people complaining mm-hmm. about the highest public servant employee in like 16 or 18 states? Every state. Maybe like, it's every state. I can remember when uh, Wichita State went to the Final Four with, uh, what was their name? Greg Marshall was the coach. Okay. And then he's the highest paid state employee in the state of Kansas the next year. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, like for our state, West Virginia, like my entire life, the highest paid state employee has been a coach. Yeah. W uh, head football or basketball coach. Yeah, absolutely. And right now it's Bob Huggins, you know, and and like, I'm not saying Bob Huggins don't need money, but like, do they need that much? Like, like, why has it gotten out of control? And the reason why is because people like Texas A&M, you know, do it. Yeah. Just throw money at a problem. They'll, they'll make the big splash because they want to bring that guy to their university. And what they do is just like the Deshaun Watson contract in the NFL. Once you throw that money out there, that like sets the new standard for yeah, what you have to do. There's a precedent now. You, yep. You've raised the bar on the floor. And now, you know, it's, it's like no, the next big contract. That's why Lamar Jackson is in such a, you know, interesting spot yep. because if he even like they, they're probably going to win this game. If they produce a good year and they go to the playoffs, like Lamar Jackson, is he getting Deshaun Watson money? Like, it'll be close. Well, he won't simply because, well, he won't get it from the Ravens because they've already kind of said. Ravens. Yeah. Um, if you were on another team, like, say, the Cowboys, he'd probably already have that money. Like, I mean, think about the the teams out there that, that are looking for quarterbacks. Your, your Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, hell, it could be your Green Bay Packers. I was going to say, there's a bunch of different landing spots. The one I've heard the biggest rumor is that he'll be the starter in Tampa Bay next year. I mean, it could be Tampa. Atlanta might be looking for one. Uh, What about Houston? I mean, Tampa, Atlanta, Houston, Indy, Detroit, possibly Denver. No. But you know, know they know. want one. Uh, there's a there's a thing is there's a, a there's list. five six teams off yes. top of your head that that would take him, and then that will have the money to spend. Hell, yeah. Pittsburgh might still be in that category come uh, next year. Uh, but uh, either way, there's a couple minutes left. You want to watch the rest of this game, bud? Yeah, we might as well finish it up. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the We Don't Know Sports Podcast. We hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful football weekend. Bet wisely, bet smartly, and most importantly, remember 1-800-GAMBLER, like Biggie said. But we're going to get off here and watch the rest of this game. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.